the ongoing communist-style takeover by the ACT government of the Catholic Calvary Hospital has clear federal implications that should concern every Australian, particularly those of faith. Let me explain and update you on the developing situation. Australia is a federation of six states and two territories, all of which have their own constitutions, parliaments, governments and laws. Now, as long as their laws don't contradict national laws, state and territory governments have a significant degree of autonomy. But whether or not the ACT government has crossed the line with their hastily passed legislation to allow themselves to take over a faith-based hospital is now under legal scrutiny. The outcome of this case will set a precedent for every Australian organisation, faith-based or otherwise. So here's a quick summary. Ignoring the stellar reputation of Canberra's Calvary Hospital, the ACT government tabled a report in April claiming that the hospital's religious ethos is problematic. Less than a month later, on the 10th of May, without warning or consultation, the ACT health minister summons the Catholic healthcare chief executive in what he would later describe as a pre-dawn raid to tell him that the government was taking over their hospital. No ifs, buts or maybes. Seemingly drunk on the power that comes from over two decades in government, ACT Labor have since doubled down on their socialist-style takeover, refusing to rule out a further forced acquisition, this time of Clare Holland House, an inpatient palliative care unit with specially trained teams caring for Canberrans with life-threatening illnesses. It is a place of unbridled care, love and compassion. The news that the hospice may be acquired sent chills down the spine of all who value the end of life care given at Clare Holland House, especially in light of the Territory's impending radical euthanasia laws. It's a shocking indictment on the ACT government that they are determined to forcibly bypass established democratic processes and enforce their twisted will on the ACT citizens despite massive community pushback. In a rare but encouraging display of grassroots there was people power in Canberra in force when there was standing room only at a packed town hall meeting to oppose the Brazen Act. The Catholic petition against the takeover has gathered well over 33,000 signatures. People are gathering to pray. Thousands of emails and phone calls have poured into MPs' offices and protesters across all ages and backgrounds have twice gathered outside the Legislative Council. Listen to what some had to say. This is not about efficiency. This is not about making Calvary Hospital better, it is about making it worse and it is about making it a factory for death. Um, it is a great place to work and you know, I'm, I'm hoping to continue to work there under the, under the same management, that's for sure. And I really appreciate people coming here to defend my workplace and, and something that's obviously precious to a lot of people here in Canberra. ACT's acting opposition leader, um, it was Jeremy Hansen, he attended both the town hall meeting and the demonstration. The legislation itself, uh, when you go through it, it basically is uh, a heist. You know, metaphorically, they've got a gun at Calvary's head, give us everything that you've got, and if you don't deliver, we are calling in the police to take it by force. That is the legislation. Yes. Tellingly, Health Minister Rachel Stephen-Smith has refused our invitations to meet. In recognition of the clear federal implications regarding freedom of conscience and faith, though, the Prime Minister and the federal opposition leader have spoken to the media about the takeover. They've drawn a very clear distinction between the major party positions. Mr Dutton supports the hospital's right to its ongoing existence and pro-life stance. But in a shocking betrayal of his Catholic roots, Mr Albanese has ignored pleas from the hospital to intervene. The Prime Minister's reluctance, reluctance sorry, to stand up for freedom of conscience and faith does not augur well for his promise to deliver a religious discrimination bill, the very process of which has already drawn the ire of faith-based schools and institutions due to the anti-faith draft report presented to government by the Australian Law Reform Commission. If followed, their recommendations would effectively remove the rights of parents across the country to choose their child's education and parents are not happy. The precedent here in the ACT shows that if the government-funded Law Reform Commission get their way, they won't stop at faith-based schools either. Churches certainly appear to be in their sight. As far as the Calvary Hospital goes, lawyers will now decide whether to allow the ACT government to proceed with their disregard of democratic processes. 
On behalf of every fair-minded Australian, the Calvary Hospital has commenced legal action against the ACT government, successfully applying for an injunction to stop them from carrying out their raid just for a brief window of time to allow for legal scrutiny. And this seems to have taken the ACT government by surprise because so conceited are they that this propaganda pamphlet, quite obviously planned and printed in advance, turned up in letterboxes in Canberra early this week. It celebrates their coup in taking over the Calvary Hospital. But they popped the champagne corks a little bit too prematurely and it's an embarrassing turn of events for the ACT Labor government and for the Prime Minister as their totalitarian attitude and actions are now being exposed to the legal process. So we wait. But whichever side the legal battle falls, we will not stop fighting back against this decision and the precedent it sets. It's a very clear election issue, both in the ACT and federally. The Labor government in the ACT and federally have ignored the cries of the people they were elected to represent. This week, the Australian newspaper featured a Johannes Leek cartoon about the hospital takeover, and it speaks volumes. The drawing features the cross, clearly identifying the hospital as a Christian institution. But more than that, the cross is a symbol that clearly represents the true healer, Jesus. It is he who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Clearly, if the government wins the legal battle to take over the hospital, one of the first things they will do is remove that cross along with the compassion, love and care that it represents. We will keep you informed. God bless you.